This is a Westinghouse AM radio and I thought I'd use it and go through the circuit with the schematic and show the signal flow and it does work pretty good. I can only pick up a couple of stations during the day local station. Show on at 6 o'clock tonight and then at 8 o'clock we'll have the kickoff between the Golden Gophers and the Tar Heels. A lot expected of Carolina football this year. UNC That's WPTF. And what will they do after the... We're starting at 6 o'clock tonight right here on WPTF. WPTF news time is at 3.30. I found this radio pretty interesting, particularly the audio circuit. It is handled a little differently than I've seen in, quite frankly, any other radio. I've never seen it handled this way. So let's start and take a look at the schematic for this radio. Here's the circuit and on the left we have our radio station frequencies which I'm representing in yellow and our local oscillator is below the transistor and that's represented in blue. So let's take a look at a short video and see what happens in this circuit when we mix these two frequencies together. Here we have our station frequency and our local oscillator frequency and when we mix them together and add them together we get a higher frequency and in our radio we use the difference and that is 455 kilohertz and that puts the intermediate frequency just below the AM band As we saw in the video, when we subtract the two frequencies, we're going to end up with 455 kilohertz. And that is the output of this first transistor. And all the IFs are very sharply tuned to 455 kilohertz. And this signal is sent to the next transistor which amplifies it it gets filtered again and then again sent to the next transistor which amplifies it again and gets filtered for the last time in the third IF can and at this point this is what we have 455 intermediate frequency which is modulated with audio. And if you take a look that, at this, and if you drew a line through the center of it long ways, we've got just as much energy at the top as the bottom. So we can't amplify this for audio because they cancel each other out. And the diode cuts this in half. And now we have just the positive half and this can be amplified for the audio because it no longer adds up to zero. Now this 455 goes down to C10 and that drains off the 455 and from that point on we have audio 
and that is traveling through a capacitor up a resistor and then this is really unusual it's going back through the secondary of the second IF again and to the transistor so this transistor is amplifying both the 455 intermediate frequency and the audio and the audio continues through half of the primary of the next IF and down and C11 is draining off any 455 and the audio continues over to the audio transformer driver which is uh, iron core so RF can't get through that and at this point we're going to start into a push-pull amplifier. When the secondary at the top is negative, that's when the top transistor will amplify that half of the audio and send it over to the output transformer. On the next cycle of audio, the bottom is negative, and that's when the bottom transformer, the transistor, I mean, the bottom transistor will conduct, amplifying the audio and sending that half over to the output transformer. Now the signal is strong enough to drive a speaker. This is the AVC, and as the signal increases, a higher positive voltage is developed, and that gets applied to the base of X2, and that causes X2 not to amplify as much. This audio circuit is just a little different than what I normally see. It works quite well, but I didn't expect that one transistor was going to amplify both the intermediate frequency and the audio. Thanks for watching.